Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Ask Deadly, the weekly show where you guys leave me some questions in the comment section and I do my best to answer them. You're also going to be seeing some gameplay of Mountain Blade Warband Viking Conquest and I'm pretty excited for Bannerlord. So if you want to see some Bannerlord stuff on the channel eventually and maybe a few live streams, also let me know in the comment section below. If you don't know anything about Mountain Blade, I believe the Steam Summer Sale, it's cheap right now, so definitely check it out. It's a pretty awesome game. I've dived a lot of hours into it already. And if you're interested in like realism with medieval kind of combat, it's definitely a game that's up your alley. Aside from the new features they're adding in .63, what else do you think they can add in the future of Daisy's updates? We're probably going to be seeing more aspects of bushcrafting and survival, base building, and of course vehicles. A lot of new vehicles including aerial helicopters and airplanes themselves. So that is probably where the future updates are going to be going to, just getting all the features in the game. I think it would be interesting, not saying this would ever in a million years happen, if they would incorporate bites, and if you were bitten in an arm or a leg, you would need to get it amputated. Then you would have to loop prosthetic limbs, maybe arms and medical stations to get around at a slower pace. What do you think? Well, let me start off by saying that the Daisy zombies or infected are not very similar to any other movies, TV shows, or games out there. Now this has been stated by the developers at a variety of different events that the infected in DayZ are actually unable to pass on the illness to you because you're already immune. The illness was supposed to, or the infection was supposed to infect everybody in the world and you are a small percentage of survivors that are actually immune to the disease. So ever getting bitten by a zombie will never be much of a problem. At least you're not going to be actually turning into a zombie yourself. But what might happen and what probably would happen if you were bitten by an old decaying uh, person that is on the last uh, brink of their life um, would probably be infection. I would say being bitten in the arm or leg would be pretty infectious. And if you didn't get it treated correctly, then yes, a loss of limb, I think, is definitely suitable for the environment of day Z, uh, especially for a survival game. So that's something that they should definitely consider. Now, when it comes to being able to find prosthetics, that might be a bit of a stretch. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be interested in adding that. So for sure, I think losing uh, an arm is probably something that we could see maybe eventually added into the game. But again, this is all hypothetical. We'll have to see. Hey Deadly, what do you think if they add a parkour system to DayZ, like the one in the DayZ mod in Arma 3? You can climb over walls and get on top of the roofs of buildings and such. That sounds like a great idea, and I really hope that they expand the vaulting system, allowing us to have a more uh, variety on how we move through the terrain, especially in urban areas. Because with this new graphic fidelity update, it's great for woodland combat and ghillie suits. It's kind of changed the game in some ways. But for your urban warfare guys, being able to travel around the cities, it hasn't really been expanded yet. So I would definitely be interested to seeing that kind of system. Or maybe just expanding the vault system to where if you're like holding W and looking at a wall and you vault, you actually like try to climb up the wall rather than trying to sidestep over a fence. Or if you're holding W near a fence, it just automatically detects it and it does the jump over. Things like that. So yeah, I'm game for it. You've spoken about your support for the modding in DayZ, but from what I experienced in DayZ Mod, once unofficial modders got their hands on the game files, this only caused A, the player base to be split up massively and no server will fill up properly, and B, the only servers I ever get close to being full will be modded to the point that there are barely even DayZ anymore. What is your answer to this criticism of the modding in DayZ, considering you're a supporter of public modding? I think you have a very good point and a lot of other people share your sentiment. So I wouldn't say that you're in the minority here. There's actually a large amount of people that think very similar to you and don't want modding added to the game. Um, I mean, the Overwatch and Epoch mods were definitely toxic at times and very cancerous. And it's a shame that so many people enjoyed them so much and sort of took away from what Daisy standalone was supposed to, or Daisy mod at least was supposed to be. But there was also some amazing maps and some great mods that expanded upon the vanilla system of Daisy Survival and even pushed it to a more difficult level, like Daisy 2017, for example, Day Zero, Daisy Namask, 
Those are all three extremely hardcore survival mods that came out of the modding experience that people maybe not remember or haven't tried or because Overwatch and Epoch had such a drastic impact on how the Daisy mod was played, tend to forget about their experiences on those great mods. So I'm for more maps. I'm for more hardcore survival experiences. I am not for mods like Overwatch. Um, but hey, that's up to the community. So if the community wants mods and, and servers like that, then that's just the way this game is, is going. I would just enjoy standalone for what it is for the time being, which is probably like the most pure I've ever seen a Daisy mod or a zombie mod for Arma come close to. I don't think anything matches Daisy standalone in its current state. And yeah, that could be a tough statement to defend, but I'm going to stick with it. I think Daisy standalone is pretty sweet in the current state, 0.62. What do you think of the Survivor Games? Well, Survivor Games was a really great way of promoting DayZ to an eSport community or to people who may not have seen DayZ before. And it was very exciting to pin popular YouTubers and streamers against each other and have their fans watch in excitement. Uh, I would love to see that continue in the future at some point. However, there was a few moments and a few times in survivor games where there was poor choices made by the people who were organizing the event uh, during the matches for example anthony basically dying and then coming back or being disconnected and in basically dead uh, while being unconscious and waking back up and being able to play the rest of the game essentially getting himself a second life and a lot of people had an issue with that and that was not Anthony's fault at all that was the fault of the organizers allowing him to continue to play and there was another uh, a few other situations where lag and server instability uh, have caused issues for the competitors um, which is why I believe we haven't had a survivor games in over two years now uh, I played in the last qualifier and I came 10th uh, out of 38, I believe. So it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. I would love to participate again uh, in one of those events uh, in the future. So if they bring it back, I would love to participate, but we'll have to see. They may even do something like H1Z1 King of the Kill, who knows, where they build a mod into Daisy Standalone for competitive PvP. I find that highly unlikely, but they might be going in that direction, and we're just going to have to wait and see. Why do you think H1Z1 never became as popular as DayZ? I'm assuming that you're talking about H1Z1 Just Survive and not H1Z1 King of the Kill, because arguably King of the Kill is way more popular than DayZ Standalone is. Uh, even though that Battlegrounds is out and it's taking a little bit of the thunder away from King of the Kill, it's still a wildly popular game. So let's focus on H1Z1 Just Survive. I think the primary reason is because um, after the act, well, I mean, this is just an assumption, but this is what it looked like to me. After uh, Sony Online Entertainment was acquired, there seems to be more uh, push towards the products that are purely making the money, which would have been King of the Kill with all of the crates and everything that was in the game. That's what people were buying and that's what people were wanting. And therefore, there was more resources uh, allocated to H1Z1 King of the Kill and not as many to Just Survive. And Just Survive, the last time I checked, had anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000 people who still play it. But that's not as many as it was, or not as many as it probably should. Now, arguably, DayZ doesn't get better numbers than 3,000 at times. But with the release of 0.62, there's been a, 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 like a flux of new people coming back to the game, which has been really cool. And it's clear that DayZ standalone has a future. It's pretty clear that H1Z1 Just Survive does not at this point. Uh, and all the focus and attention is on King of the Kill. So... Why do you think H1Z1 ever became as popular as DayZ? Because of King of the Kill. It basically murdered any of its chances of becoming a true survival game. Hey Deadly, I'm not sure if this has been covered yet or not, but how does hoarding affect the server's loot economy? For example, if someone stockpiled a ridiculous number of, say, sewing kits or MP5s in multiple tents, can you explain how this would affect or not affect the odds of finding such an item in the spawns across the map? Both are local and distant spawns. Okay, so I'm going to be completely straight and honest with you. I have no actual idea, and this is all bro science, and just based on from what I have experienced while playing the game. So I'm not completely sure uh, if this is how it works. 
but I believe every single item has a total um, uh, quantity number of how, how many that can be on the map at one particular time. So for example, and only a certain amount of will spawn in at a certain time. So whenever somebody wipes the persistency, you're always gonna be finding like basically SVDs, FN fouls, M4s, all the rarest weapons in the game right at the start. What tends to happen is people stores exactly what you mentioned, store these items inside of the tents. And more like SVDs and M4s will continue to spawn in. More people will have these weapons, more people will use them, fight and die. But as time goes on, more and more people will start to hoard these items that are spawning in, saving them for a rainy day. So after about a week or so, it's to the point where all of the possible M4s or SVDs that can be on the server at one particular time is at its maximum peak. And therefore the server will no longer spawn that weapon in until those weapons are destroyed either by the barrel despawning or somebody finding it and dying or removing all those guns uh, from the inventory or stashes. So there's a limited amount, only a certain amount can spawn at a time, and once it reaches that maximum, they won't spawn anymore. That's basically from what we can observe. Well guys, that is it for this week's episode of Acid Deadly. Thank you so much for leaving your comments, guys. Because this is getting a lot more popular than I expected, the way that I worked this video was the top comments I'm going to be probably reading first. So if you see someone with a similar question and you want to see it answered, give them a like, make them go to the top, and hopefully I'll be able to see it over all of the rest. Uh, I'll see you guys during the daily live streams every single morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And be sure to subscribe for more daily content here on the channel.